Welcome to Digital Asset News, to get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, still some concerning things. First up, did someone withdraw 96 million worth of Bitcoin from OKX? CEO Jay Howe has the answer. And if you've been living under a rock or just uh, haven't really been up for air lately, uh, the exchange OKX has shut down all transactions due to an investigation and the detainment of one of their founders. And so the question was asked, how was Bitcoin moved if everything was on hold? Also, Bitfinex announces Polkadot staking rewards next to Cardano, EOS, and Atom. This had me pretty excited because I own most of those, just not Atom. And lastly, Bitfinex partners with Celsius Network, limited lending platform. This is big news for Bitfinex all the way around. They're going to be able to buy things easily and also be able to earn a nice APY or yield. But before that, let's take a look at the market. So today it is October 17th. It's about 1 p.m. Texas time. It is Saturday. And if you may have noticed, I did no video yesterday. And I have to tell you, I got to tell you that um, it just felt very weird. I got so busy with other things, uh, other parts of businesses that uh, I just could not make one, which is a rarity. And uh, it just felt made me feel very antsy. I, I have goals. I have uh, uh, structure in place. It's just uh, yesterday everything kind of broke down. So it makes me feel, um, like I said, uh, very discombobulated. So I try to get back in the groove, which is why today we're going to do two videos. So first up, uh, this is what's going on today. And this is not surprising, uh, like we talked about yesterday. And also, uh, this is another thing that's been taking more of my time. I've been doing a lot, a lot of live streams over on Theta. If you look in the description of every one of my videos, um, there is the link. It just says follow Dan. The very first one is my Theta channel. And I usually do live streams around uh, 11 to 12, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, Mountain Center time. And it goes for like an hour. And they're fun. I mean, like, they're super fun. They're really uh, engaging. There's not a lot of people there. I answer everybody's questions. It's just good times. So if you get a chance, uh, check those out on Theta and just join me over there. But um let's see what's going on right now so bitcoin is down 0.2 percent uh ethereum is down 0.6 percent and this is what i was talking about yesterday on theta i was saying that because this this okx what's going on over there which is just awful uh you're gonna see a dip you're gonna see uh big slumps and it could be massive or it could be a little bit but it's definitely gonna slump because that's how things work in cryptocurrency digital assets when you have news that is negative everything just kind of falls apart for a little bit this is a very early community a very early uh, asset class so when something like this happens hey there's a little bit of a dip so just expect it and just know that uh, this is a great opportunity because nothing changed uh, Bitcoin didn't get hacked uh, you know Satoshi Nakamoto didn't come on and go surprise me Vladimir Putin and and nothing has changed right uh, Ethereum is still moving forward uh, tethers tether nobody really cares uh, XRP is still holding strong at almost 25 cents so uh, nothing really uh, is is different it's just that OKX you know had a little had a little hiccup so this again is a great opportunity just stand back and go you know what uh, I'm gonna pick some little things up on the dip if you're a dollar cost averager like myself you can go you know what fantastic time Timing. This is the day I'm going to DCA, uh, not dump a bunch of money in, but when it goes down a little bit, just put a little money back in there. See what we got. Because I can tell you, I can tell you right now that most of these ones in the top 20, I'll say, uh, not all, but most will go back up. But uh, let's see what we got. So Chainlink's down 3%. Cardano's 1.6 up. Hey, that's pretty good. Let's see. Let's see what's up because everything else is down. Stellar of 7% on the news that they're going to support USDC. So so that's actually big news. Um, if you're ever trying to send USDC, sometimes uh, not as quick, but if you can send on the Stellar network, I mean, that is like lightning fast, super fast. When I use Stellar to, to send anything and the same thing with XRP, uh, it is it is um, light years ahead of everything else uh, that I have found. So when I'm, when I'm sending Ethereum, it's not too quick, but it's quick enough. Uh, Bitcoin's a little bit slow, but XRP, it's like a couple seconds. Stellar, same thing. So now you can send USDC on the Stellar network. That's big news. Stable coin off of Stellar. So that's why people bought that. And this is the result. What else we got? Wrap Bitcoin's up. Hey, great. OKB is down 19%. That makes sense. As that is a token of OKX. So sure, I can see why that would probably take a dip. And then NEM is up 1.3%. Congratulations, NEM holders. You're rock, rocking it right there with 1% and pretty much everything else. Ah, Theta down 7%. I don't know what happened there, but I will tell you this, uh, I will be buying. I think today I'm gonna be buying a massive amount because I'm. what I'd like to do is I'd like to be on a guardian node. That means I need 10,000 uh, Theta. So if I can do that, I will do it. And actually this leads me to a, to a question I actually got from a subscriber. They said, hey, I'd like to be 
on uh, one of those guardian nodes for theta, but I don't, uh, I'm not gonna be able to get 10,000, which is, pretty, let's be honest, it's pretty tough. So I reached out to my man, Digital Dave over at Crazy for Cryptos. I asked him that same question. He goes, and he says, I believe they could join gpool.io with less than 10K. I was like, oh, interesting. So uh, gpool.io, I'll put that in the description, but it's just gpool.io. And I think that's how it works. I haven't done my due diligence, so don't quote me, but it's just a little off the top of my head type of thing I wanted to talk about real quick. So yeah, that's what's going on in the market. Let's just jump into today's story, huh? All right, so the question is, this is another great story by Alex Davnia. Did someone withdraw 96 million worth of Bitcoin? So great question. What happened? So if you don't know, there is something very odd going on at OKX. I have heard and I have read conflicting stories. One is that uh, the founder was detained by Chinese police, but then that was like a week ago. But then they said, no, 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 it was yesterday. And then they said something about how that was untrue and there was something different. But regardless, it just, a lot of things just are not adding up. That's all I can say. I'm not here to try to spread FUD, I'm just trying to give you the best information. So there was, when I was doing the live stream actually uh, on Theta, I was looking on Twitter and one of the, um, it was whale alert. And it said 5,000 Bitcoin just transferred from OKX. Like right as I was doing the live stream, I was like, what? How the heck did that happen? That shouldn't happen. So this was actually in response to that. So OKX CEO Jay Howe addresses the issues heads on about these internal transfers, claiming that the addresses in question have been mislabeled by third parties. So apparently when they reported this, and it's just a bot that just looks at just a grand search throughout the internet about what kind of transactions are going on that are heavy or whale-like transactions. And one of those was a big move of 5,000 Bitcoin, which it said from OKX to Binance. And they said, oh, no, 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 uh, that was just an internal transfer. So uh, don't look behind the curtain about the wizards doing. Anyhow, OKX announced the suspension of withdrawals on October 16th, causing an immediate 3% Bitcoin drop. Again, I don't, I understand why this happens, but uh, I don't understand why people don't go, wow, this is like a little sale. I can need to pick that up. I was kind of hoping it would go deeper, but it didn't. That was kind of a bummer. It later, later turned out that Zhu Star Mingzing, the founder of the Malta-based company of OKX, had been taken away by Chinese police. In a statement shared with you today, how wholeheartedly apologized for pausing withdrawals claim that it was done for security purposes. And again, this this one says it, he was just taken away by Chinese police. In another article I read, it was done a week ago. So I don't understand why this is going on right now. All other activities, including deposits, spot trading, derivatives, staking, etc., remain unaffected. And we would like to provide our assurance to all our customers that their funds are safe. A decision to temporarily pause withdrawals was taken with user security in mind. So that sounds pretty good. I like that part. But here's where it gets crazy. Ming Zing acts as OKX's sole pr private key holder, which is why the exchange cannot authorize withdrawals as of now. Let me read that one more time. Ming Zing, who is the founder, who was taken away by the Chinese police, uh, acts as OKX's sole only private key holder, which is why the exchange cannot authorize withdrawals as of now. Lastly, it states we are un unable to reveal any information that might put our users' funds at risk. Suffice to say, that OKX maintains the highest security standards to protect our users, blah, blah, blah. Okay, sure. Uh, all I'm going to tell you is this. When they start to withhold information, it never is a good sign. Again, I could be totally wrong. Uh, I could be spreading fun by, FUD myself. But if it was me, I wouldn't feel very comfortable going to that exchange. Uh, I have my problems with uh, Coinbase. You know, they, they go down, but it's not like they go down for like forever. Uh, they come up and they say, hey, we had a screw up and we fixed it. Now, I still understand why a billion dollar company can't uh, be a little more proactive, but that's besides the point. The point here is that this exchange apparently has a sole private key holder, <laughs> and that's who does all the authorizations. Are you out of your mind? Did we not learn anything from Quadrica CX, the Canadian exchange? The same thing happened with their founder. Some guy, I forgot his name, he was the sole private key holder. He went to India, died, supposedly, and then everybody lost their money. Kind of crazy, right? I'm not saying that's what's going to happen here. I'm just saying that uh, unless I'm reading this wrong, and and, please, and feel free to correct me in the comment section, this is crazy. This is crazy town. I would not go into this. I don't know why this is happening. I don't know why anybody would go to OKX. Again, I could be wrong. Let me know in the comment section. Let's move on.
Next up, Bitfinex announces Polkadot staking rewards next to Cardano, EOS, and Atom. And uh, I've got, I invest in a Polkadot. I love it. Uh, I think it's going to be big. I think it's going to be big because of Gavin, Dr. Gavin Wood, who is part of what I call the Ethereum Mafia, who was one of the great eight uh, that uh, was the uh, founders of Ethereum. So I believe in that. And what I was interested in was the staking thing, because if you try to stake it outside of the exchanges, it's a little bit technical. I mean, you can do it, but uh, I'm not going to do it. I'll just be honest with you. But I mean, there's other people out there that are much more savvy and smarter than me, uh, which is not hard, I might add. Uh, so, you know, great. But on the, if Bitfinex is going to do it, fantastic. I've also learned through my live stream at Theta that Kraken is also doing staking of Polkadot and you get up to 12% returns. And that was started back in August. So uh, it was just interesting. So I thought this was great and other exchanges doing it. So what's going on here? So uh, the major Bitfinex exchange spread the word about adding staking rewards for Polkadot. This open source platform ensures interoperability between multiple chains. If you don't know what Polkadot is, it does not compete with anything. It's on a smart contract uh, type of blockchain like an EOS, a Cardano, an Ethereum. It just is there for interoperability because we're going to need that. We're going to need to have blockchains talk to each other, and that's why we're going to need a lot of Polkadot. So that's why I invested into it. So Dot has been added to a group of coins that were listed, listed for staking, uh, such as Cardano, Atom, Vsys. I don't know what that is. EOS and Tezos. And it states staking allows users to earn more profits using their crypto holdings. Bitfinex offers 14% annually for holding their dot coins for them. What do we got over here, Kraken? 12%. Well, hopefully they can uh, speed that up a little bit. Then lastly, Bitfinex in-house custody service will ensure that stake coins are safe and sound. Coins will not be leaving Bitfinex for third-party custodians. I like that. I like that so much to go sign up at Bitfinex, but guess what? I'm a U.S. resident, and they told me this is the email to confirm that you have indicated you are a U.S. resident, and you must cease trading and funding activity, close any trading platforms, and blah, 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 because you suck. You're in the United States. I really wish the exchanges would just list it on their home screen. Like, this is who we accept, and this is who we don't. If you're in one of these countries, don't even bother. Uh, go away. As a business and pulling people in, it is pretty brilliant. Just kind of say, hey, come on in here. Give us your email address, and da-da-da. And then they say, ah, oh, sorry, sucker. You don't. We, <laughs> you can't use this. We're, we're, we apologize. And then later on, when they do get compliance, and, they, and the U.S. does say it, then they can just email all the people that signed up before. I go, hey, guess what? Why don't you come on back? We miss you. And we're going to be able to accept you. So kind of a bummer, but what are you going to do? However, I'm pretty excited about the Kraken thing. So I'm glad I did that Theta live stream because people told me what I don't know. And I love that. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And uh, let's move on to our last story. So na last up, Bitfinex partners with Celsius Network. Again, I was super pumped until I learned I couldn't use Bitfinex. But I do use Celsius. I do use it a lot. If you don't know, Celsius is on my one, two, three punch. Uh, I have this great little uh, spreadsheet, the exchange of wallet feeds, and it goes over everything from Coinbase, Kraken, Celsius Voyager, Binance, Uphold, Abra, Simple Swap Unit. Swap Swift, Swift X, KYC, not me, eToro, don't recommend them, and crypto.com. And I just go over trading fees are, how much it costs, how much you can get as far as a uh, interest or yield for just holding cryptocurrency on these different uh, platforms like Celsius. That's where I hold 30% of all my uh, cryptocurrency assets because I got a nice little fat yield and I like that. Also, Voyager, I got some over there and uh, I'm using Kraken more and more because I'm more excited about their banking license. But if you're looking for the exchange, it's in the description of my videos. There's a link looks just like this and you can check it out. If you use the affiliate links, great. You get between $10 and $25 just to sign up and I highly recommend you do that before the next bull run because in 2017, you could not get on to exchanges because they were all shutting down because they had too many people. So do that now. You can go right to the exchanges or wallets and download. That's fine. Uh, but you just don't get the 1025 just if you want to use the link. Uh, everything's up to you. Anyhow, let's jump back. So this is big news for Bitfinex and Celsius. And it states, our customers can open a wallet with Celsius and manage it through the Bitfinex platform. Though Through their Celsius wallet, our customers can earn a return of up to 6.2% on Bitcoin, up to almost 10% on Ethereum, and a variety of leading crypto according to Bitfinex platform. And then I'll just paraphrase the whole rest of the story. So I think this is great because on Celsius, 
you can buy through Celsius. They use some kind of like third party thing, but it's like three and a half percent for a fee. So I don't recommend that. Actually, I talk about that on the actual uh, exchange fee. I just say, you know, this is pretty much used for interest. I use uh, Kraken and Voyager to buy my crypto. So I thought it was pretty cool that Bitfinex, you can buy it on there. It looks like the fees that I saw were pretty low. And then you could just, you know, get the yield, the APY uh, over there and just buy and hold on the exchange now again of course not your crypto not your keys we're always talking about you know you have to actually have your keys to actually have control of them however it is nice just to you know stake those things out uh inside and make it pretty easy but it's up to you you can take them off and you can stake them like that or you know you can just do nothing put leave them on the exchange and have yield so again it's all up to you whatever you want to do so so that is it that is my my quick down and dirty um, video that i want to do yesterday that i couldn't do and then i'll be talking later today about some uh, what I feel is some pretty big news. There is a uh, an interview with the uh, head of the CFTC where he is basically saying, I'm not kidding, that he loves cryptocurrency and he's trying to support it. And actually he's pulling in people from Silicon Valley and, and people who actually have worked for exchanges to come work with the CFTC. And he wants America to be the leaders. I was blown away at this one. So there's that. And I also wanna talk about uh, Tesla and Chainlink. I think that's a pretty big story, I guess and uh, some other things that are you know kind of cool so i'll do that later but uh that's it for this video if you like these videos there's gonna be too much gonna pop up on your left and right not sure yeah, youtube kind of controls that stuff and uh that's all i got for today so thanks well that's <laughs> that's all i got for right now i'll say so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one which will probably drop in another three or four hours all right bye